guys like Billy Walters, Lem Bankers, those guys, do you think they had these tips? Do you think it's part of their job to find out, hey, who's going to throw the game, which guys are going to miss that free throw, that sort of thing? Is that all part of getting the edge? Oh, I think that's entirely about it. I mean, I think that's what put them above everybody else. Because I've talked to Lem Baker. I interviewed him for this next book I'm working on. And he used to hang out with Lefty Rosenthal, who was one of his best friends. And Lefty was known as a massive game fixer back in the 50s and 60s. I mean, that's what he did <laughs> before he came to Las Vegas and built the sports book at the Stardust. He was fixing games, and he had all the inf- inside information on these guys. He knew which athletes were out there partying late at night. He knew which ones had drug problems, who had gambling problems, women problems. He knew all that stuff. And I think Billy Walters is another guy who has a series of informants who give him this sort of information. Because James Batista, the guy who was working with Donahue, who's also another huge sports gambler in the book Gaming the Game, which was written about him and kind of by him, he talks, too, about how he used to get information from sports journalists, guys who were also betting on games and get inside information from them, get inside information from team physicians. And those big-time gamblers, those big-time high rollers, they're not doing anything wrong. I mean, they're just getting an edge. Yeah, exactly, and there's, like you say, there's nothing wrong with that, but the ultimate edge, in my opinion, is if you know a game is fixed, and that is the ultimate, ultimate inside information, that you know somebody's not going to perform their best because they're intentionally not performing their best, and I think it's also these big-time sports gamblers who could be the ones who are directing some of these fixes, because again, you know, with James Batista working with Donnie, he, he knew what Donnie he was doing, and he was making literally millions of dollars off of him because he knew Donnie he was basically fixing games. What's the greatest fix in sports history? I think it's Super Bowl three. Tell us why. Because I believe that the Colts and Bubba Smith, who played on that Colts team, publicly questioned whether that game was a legitimate or not, and he played on the losing side. I mean, that's a game that really made the NFL. Well, exactly. And I think as a business decision, having the Jets win, which was an AFL team, because a lot of NFL fans, and NFL fans outnumbered AFL fans about 3-1 to one in the country at the time, they didn't think the AFL was really a legitimate league and deserved to be in, you know, the prominent NFL. That game, by having the Jets beat the Colts, who were one of the greatest NFL teams in history, even today, one of the greatest teams that ever played NFL football, and the Jets won that game. It legitimized the AFL, it made the merger a lot more possible, and it made billions of dollars for the owners. And as a business decision, the best business decision would be to have the Jets win that game at all costs. Who's the one guy you'd like to talk to? Uh, the one guy you need to answer a question that perhaps you haven't talked to yet. Is there a guy out there? I'd probably like to talk to Billy Walters because I think he'd be the type of guy who would know a whole lot more than a lot of people. I think he's the guy, if he's been making this much money and doing this much sports gambling, he knows about games that have been fixed in the past. The thing is, of course, I doubt he would admit to it. That's the hard part with all of this. I mean, I've done a lot of investigating. I've called a lot of people. I've tried to contact a lot of people. And not everyone will talk to me because a lot of times they say, hey, I want to talk about game fixing. And they're like, I don't know about that. (laughs) And there's even a lot of times I want to talk about how sports gambling really works, how these, you know, mega sports gamblers make their picks and come up with their information and that sort of thing. And I've even had some of them respond to me, not willing to be interviewed, but respond to me and say, you know, there are certain things I just don't want to reveal. I mean, it's not that I want to learn this information because I want to go out and bet on sports. I don't care. I don't I don't have the bankroll. I don't have the time. I don't have the inclination to really be a sports gambler. I just want to learn this information because I want to know what's really going on. I don't want to be lied to anymore. I want to know the truth about what's happening. Because supposedly sports gamblers and the casinos and the bookmakers are kind of the watchdog for fixed games. But the more I've investigated this, the more I've come to realize that they're not, you know, watchdogging anything. If anything, when they see some sort of oddity, when they see some sort of trend that looks like it might be fixed games, they tend to jump on board and piggyback it and bet it, as opposed to, you know, run to the feds and say, hey, I think these games have been fixed.